Hey guys, hope everyone is doing well. So we've got a, a few interesting items here in front of me, something a little bit different from what we usually see on the channel. Um, got a set of vintage cameras. Um, we have a Yashica, Nikon, a Voigtlander, and a Mercury. Um, these all came from an auction lot that I picked up earlier today, um, and they all have various problems. The uh, Yashica 124 um, at the top of the frame here is um, probably the most interesting of the bunch. Uh, we also have a Nikon FG which has a stuck shutter unfortunately and of course I didn't really know anything going into this. Um, paying a hundred bucks for the whole lot which eh, it's not fantastic but um, the thing that got me to out to that auction was actually um, a whole bunch of Leica cameras that they had. They had, I think, seven in total, including a Leica M3. But um, the nicest of them sold for over $1,000, and I was not at all prepared to pay anything remotely close to that for any of them. I was hoping that we wouldn't get very many people out there that really knew what they were. Um, unfortunately, they paid well beyond what I would consider retail price for them so yeah that was a bit of a bust but I couldn't leave empty-handed so I decided that I was going to go after that Yashica and the other three just happened to come in the same box with it so um, I didn't know what I was really getting except for the Yashica and uh, I think we've got some stuff here that is probably salvageable um, the Mercury over here is quite an interesting little camera so I'll be excited to try to clean that up. It's in pretty rough shape. Um, however the Nikon and the Yashica are both in very nice physical condition. Um, the Nikon's just a standard SLR type film camera. Nothing too fancy here. Um, so I won't focus on it as much since it's not really that fascinating. Um, it has just our standard 50mm Nikkor lens on there, um, assuming that's the kit lens that it came with. <clears throat> Includes the lens cap. Rather interesting um, method or mechanism for winding. I'm assuming the uh, the little lever here it bends kind of in the midpoint. The camera will focus on it. Come on. Come on. Yeah. The EM1 does not like to focus. This is not its strong point. Um, you'll notice there that that bends in the middle. That's a little bit different than most. I'm assuming that turns it on. Um, I have another Nikon FE, I think, that you pull the lever back like to a certain point, and that uh, activates the camera and releases the shutter. So you can, it's the works as a shutter lock. Um, I'm assuming that does sort of the same. If the uh, camera wasn't kind of half stuck in a uh, firing state. Um, as we open it up, we'll notice that the uh, shutter is down, um, but the uh, shutter release is just loose and it won't wind. So it's tried to fire, but has failed. I have put a new battery in it to no avail. It takes just standard LR44 stack of two to make three volts. Um, Unfortunately, replacing those doesn't seem to have had any effect, so I will have to do some more digging. Um, let's move these two out of the way, and we will take a look at the Yashica a little bit closer. Now, the uh, leather case on this is in quite nice condition. It's not perfect. It's got a few blemishes here and there, and this metal band around the top is cracked in a couple of places, but I'm not too concerned about that. You'll notice the front of it is missing the leatherette, or, well, technically a rubber piece. I have removed that because I've already been in this camera doing a bit of work. Because, as with the Nikon, the shutter was also stuck down. Um, and that was due to the self-timer being stuck in a wound state. Um, by getting into it, I was able to release the self-timer and free it up. And with a little bit of lubrication and just working things back and forth a little bit and cleaning it out good, it now works. So we can now wind the camera. Oh, 
and fire the shutter and it fires and all of the speeds work. Uh, I'm not sure if they're at the correct speeds, but they seem to fire about how you would expect. Now the main issue that I have with this camera, um, well, there's two issues technically. One is not a huge deal. It is the light meter on here, which uses a 1.3 volt mercury battery, um, which unfortunately has leaked inside of it. So we have a corrosion issue in the battery compartment. Um, I don't plan on using this meter, mainly because I have better external meters or I use an old iPhone to do metering and it works just fine. So I really don't need that to be functional. Um, and the, um, <clears throat> the batteries itself for it are extremely difficult to source, if not impossible to source anymore. I'm not sure mercury batteries are actually made at all anymore. I don't believe they are just due to the nature of them being made with mercury. Um, the only other issue this has that I can see right now is the viewfinder. You'll notice this is a bit wiggly. That's because the casting on one side of the viewfinder module is actually sheared off. So it's only really held on on the one side. So it likes to kind of get jammed and not work quite right. But it does work and the, uh, the ground glass is reasonably clear. I have taken it apart and cleaned it. It's not perfect and I may replace this. I found new old stock ones on eBay, but they're like $88. And I'm questioning whether I want to put that into it because it does function okay. I just have to fiddle around with it a little bit. And I really, really love the look of this camera. It is a sharp looking camera. So let's put that back away. And yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, you'll notice, see how the top of the viewfinder there is stuck up a little bit. There we go. Now it's back. So yeah, that's an issue that I would like to resolve with it. But overall, cosmetically, it's in really, really nice shape. I'm assuming when people were looking at the different cameras, somebody may have broken that because they just didn't know what they were doing. It seems like a fairly likely scenario to me. So, um, yeah, that's uh, unfortunately not really fixable. But not a big deal either. So, and I have the uh, spare parts for it over here in a bag. Spare parts. It's just a uh, just a little leatherette and one spring that came off the side of the viewfinder that's broken and the little label for the front that shows the uh, shutter lock position. Um, next up, we've got a Voigtlander. I'm not sure what model this is, but it's in pretty poor condition. It's just very, very old and very moldy. <laughs> so I'll have fun cleaning this one out. Um, I haven't been able to get it to open fully yet. It goes to there and gets stuck. I believe down inside there's a little mechanism that's supposed to rotate out, but it's just jammed up. So I don't want to force anything and break anything, but this one I think will make a very neat looking shelf piece. And if I can kind of re-glue the leather or leather coating, whatever this actually is, back on, I think it'll look pretty nice on a shelf. And it could even be potentially salvageable, so... I don't believe there's any film in it. I haven't actually tried to open that up yet. I think this little latch here slides and then that opens. Yep. So actually inside, there's a bit of corrosion going on. Yeah, there's actually quite a considerable amount of corrosion going on. So yeah, this will probably just be a shelf piece and I'm okay with that. And again, the, really the only camera that I was that interested in in this lot was the Yashica and they go for quite a bit on eBay, so. If none of the other ones are salvageable, then I get some neat things to put on a shelf, and I'm okay with that. So this one is a Mercury 2. Quite an interesting looking camera. Also in really, really gross condition. Um, mechanically, it seems to kind of work. So you can... Actually, I think it's already wound. So it's got a disc inside with your shutter uh, portion cut out and it spins. I've never seen a camera that works like this before, but it definitely needs some help because this is set to one one thousandth of a second. That is not one one thousandth of a second. It seems like either the spring is 
messed up or something's messed up inside there, I will have to tear this down and do some work on it. But um, it's quite corroded and just the metal finish of it is just deteriorating badly. So I'm going to try to polish it up with a buffing wheel, um, just like on the Dremel tool or something to clean this off. It's really, really gross to touch. Um, but I want to make it look nice again, just probably as a shelf piece. So, so yeah, that's uh, that's the haul from today. Kind of just a few interesting things that I'd like to show. I know it's definitely different than what I normally do on this channel. So hopefully you guys found it interesting. And if you have any comments on, well, things I can do to fix these up, or especially the uh, shutter problem with this uh, Nikon, that would be awesome. Because I've never really run into this issue before. On the Shika, I, I have actually had that problem on several other cameras, so I kind of knew where I was going with it, and I was able to fix it. But uh, with this SLR, I've never really done too much work on SLRs before, so I don't know how to take it apart, and yeah, I'm just I'm not really familiar with that sort of problem and what might be causing that if it's a mechanical or an electrical failure. But um, yeah, be uh, curious to what you guys think. So. Uh, down in the comments, leave any information you might have, and uh, I will catch you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed. See ya.